Chapter 66 Coulson continued to run not knowing where he was going. His wolf Samsonite was irritated with him for running. He didn't understand why they couldn't be with their mate. Coulson shifted back into his human form and started to yell into the deep forest. He hated the choices he had made and knew that he would lose any opportunity he had with Gretchen once she found out that he didn't stay and tried to defend her friends. Coulson sensed other wolves running close by. He didn't know if he should run or stay to see which pack they were from. Before he could make up his mind, he heard a deep voice from behind him. Coulson, what are you doing out here? Ruby was filled with worry. The kids hadn't come back yet, and she wanted to smack Deke into next week for leaving them behind. She paced the front porch, her anxiety building up inside her. First Amanda and now the rest of them. What was she going to say to Luna Cynthia when she arrived with the rest of the pack? Zachary walked out to the porch to lend some support to Ruby and try to calm her down. Don't, Ruby said as she raised her hand between them. I understand that I need to try and stay calm but there's just too much going on at the moment. These poor kids have already been through too much and should just be kids enjoying college life and young love. Zachary pulled her into his arms and held her as she cried. He knew she was right, but there were still a few missing pieces to the puzzle and they couldn't go off half-cocked. They needed a plan. Deke was leaning in the doorway as he listened to Ruby and Zachary. A part of him was feeling guilty for going ahead. He wasn't thinking clearly and didn't think something like this was going to happen. His one goal was to get to Vita. Vita poked him from behind. What did you do, Deke? she asked him, her tone an unhappy one. Deke sighed before he turned around and looked down at Vita. Her eyes were narrowed and looked angry at him. I asked you to run with them, why did you leave them behind? she asked as she continued to poke him in the chest. Deke tried to hide the smirk that was forming on his face. He couldn't help to find her cute. You're right. I should have stayed closer to them, he admitted. Vita's face changed from angry to surprised rather quickly. She thought he was going to fight her on this longer than he had. Why did you leave them behind? Deke sucked in a breath, he didn't know how she was going to react to what he said next. I was trying to get here, to you. Vita was stunned. She didn't know how to respond to that. It was sweet that he wanted to be close to her and she assumed it was to keep her protected, but his decision had now cost them Hudson, Marco and Tabel went somewhere they had no clue about. Vita gave him a small smile as she reached up and cupped his face with her hand. Deke closed his eyes and purred at the feeling of his mate's touch. I appreciate you wanting to be with me to protect me. But now we have an even bigger problem on our hands. Deke nodded, he understood what she was trying to say. Hudson started to come to as he felt his arms restricted behind him. He was sitting on his knees on a dirt floor. Hudson sensed Amanda was close by and looked up to see her chained. Amanda. He tried to get up on his feet and rush over to her, but he was pushed back onto the ground. Looking at her, he almost didn't recognize her. He could tell that she was weak as her head rested against one of her arms. Her eyes were closed. A ferocious growl was let out from his chest from his wolf Artemis could feel the pain their mate was going through. Let her go, he yelled out to the guards. But they wouldn't listen. The bracelet was starting to burn his skin, the burn igniting his anger from within. His eyes started to glow as he tapped into his wolf's strength, his fangs grew and his claws were sharp as he lashed out at one of the guards and bit his neck. Hudson yelled out and dropped to his knees when he felt an electric shock run through his body. There was a giggle that started behind him. He looked up to see Ophelia walking towards him. He growled at her as he watched her strut around him. Oh, Hudson, Hudson, Hudson. Look at the predicament you've gotten yourself into. Such a shame, Ophelia said as she continued to circle him. She leaned into his ear from behind and whispered, you're losing control. You'll become a rabid wolf and they'll have to put you down. If only there was something you could do. 
Hudson glared at Ophelia, growling menacingly. Ophelia continued to walk around him as she tried to think, then she acted like the thought just came to her. But there is something you can do. Artemis pleaded in his head, don't listen to her. Don't do it. Hudson shook the noise out of his head. What do I have to do? he asked. Ophelia smiled devilishly at him. Reject Lil Mandy Stevens over there and it will be all over. Amanda started to come to, as her body shivered telling her that Hudson was close, but she was having a hard time opening her eyes. She could hear people talking but couldn't hear exactly what they were saying. Slowly, she started to open her eyes. At first, everything was blurry but then things started to take shape. She sucked in a breath when she saw Hudson kneeling on the ground, raging with anger. Hudson, she tried to call out but the words barely formed. Hudson looked up at her, he'd heard her call out to him. See, Hudson, all this would be over for her. She would get to have a normal life if you just say those little words, Ophelia coaxed. Amanda's eyes widened as she put two and two together. She tried to see into Hudson's eyes to see where his thoughts were, but he was too far gone. The rage had taken over. The Hudson she knew and loved was gone. Think about your pack, Hudson. Your parents, what would they do without you? Ophelia continued. Artemis pleaded with him not to do it. Hudson looked down at the ground and then back up to Amanda. Through gritted teeth, he said, I, Hudson Harlow, reject you Amanda Stevens as my mate. The room fell silent as the bracelet fell off Hudson's wrist. Amanda's head dropped and her heart was forever broken. Chapter 67 Ophelia was giddy with excitement as she watched Amanda break down O from the rejection. Her plan worked. He was finally rid of his mate and now there was nothing in the way of them being together. She knew she had to play her cards just right for him to pick her as his Luna. As much as she wanted to run to him, she knew that he needed some time. Time to realize that Amanda wasn't the right wolf for him. In time he would see that Ophelia was the girl he needed. And she would be right there reminding him, once he was ready. Tristan just sat back and watched the fireworks. He was shocked that her plan had worked and he rejected his mate. He would need to keep that spell that she found for safekeeping. He would need it in the near future. Right now he was formulating a plan to get his girl away from that miserable Leakin. Tristan would show Leakin that he was no match for Tristan. He would have his Vita back, it was just a matter of when. Hudson's head hung low, not wanting to watch the woman he loved to go through the rejection. He could hear Tab in the background yelling at him. How could you? How could you be so selfish? But it was just noise to him at the moment. His wolf wasn't happy with him, but he understood why he had to do it. Now he just needed to be patient. Tabitha cried out at Hudson for being a fool. She couldn't watch her friend go through this. Some of her blamed herself for being selfish and wanted more time with her mate. She turned to Marco and buried her head into his chest and cried. They were both still bound but she needed to feel him, she needed his touch to calm her down. Bad thoughts were running through her head at the moment. She needed him to keep her from going crazy and doing something she might regret. Amanda just rocked back and forth, she repeated the same words over and over again, he rejected me. He rejected me. Her heart couldn't take any more pain. She was ready for them to just end it all. She heard Willow call out to her. Amanda? But she didn't want to listen. Where was she when she needed her most? They could have together used the power that was in her and rid the world of these horrible people. But her wolf refused to help. And now look where she was strung up, weak and pathetic, just waiting for them to finish her off. Amanda closed her eyes. She was ready. There was a bright light that appeared in front of her. She winced at how bright the light was hitting her eyes. She could just barely see a figure walking. Through the light. Was this her guardian angel? Were they going to take her to a better place? 
Amanda, a feminine voice called out to her. As the figure got closer she looked vaguely familiar. Amanda, you need to stay strong. Listen to your wolf. She has been with you the whole time. Remember who you are, remember where you come from. Amanda felt warmth and love from the woman standing in front of her. Amanda's lip started to quiver. Mom? The woman smiled as she nodded her head in confirmation. Amanda, it's not your time. You need to be the strong girl that your father and I know you to be. But how? Hudson rejected me. How am I going to get through this without my mate? She cried out, she dropped her head as the tears ran down her cheeks. Her mom lifted her chin and smirked. I understand you feel like your heart has been broken. You heard his words, you felt the betrayal of his voicing the rejection. Listen to your wolf, she'll never steer you wrong. Your father and I are so proud of you. We are always with you, never forget that. And always remember you're a Jenkins through and through. Her mom leaned in and kissed her forehead gently before she disappeared. Ruby tapped her fingers anxiously, hoping Hudson was able to hear her message through the mind link. Hopefully, her message got to him before he did something foolish. She lifted her nose and smelled the air. Ruby sighed with relief when she smelled the members of the pack getting close. Reinforcements Ruby walked down the steps and started to walk out to the driveway as she waited for them to shift back into their human form. The first to appear out of the forest was Luna Cynthia and Alpha Benjamin. Then slowly, one by one more appeared. Ruby's heart filled with joy as she watched her pack move in unison toward the house. Her brows furrowed as she saw someone unfamiliar to her walk with them. Pack's here, Ruby called out behind her. Deke and everyone else walked out to the front porch. Gretchen stayed close to Zachary trying to figure out what to expect. Luna Cynthia walked up to Ruby and hugged her. How are you holding up? she asked. As well as can be expected. Luna, there's something I have to tell you, Ruby started but before she could say anything more, Luna stopped her. I know that the kids have been kidnapped. We ran into Colson over there and he was able to fill us in on what happened, Luna Cynthia said. We are on our way to the Howler's Pack. According to Colson, his sister has been behind most of this. I just can't believe that Samuel would allow this, Benjamin told them. Colson shook his head, the pack has always been against the mixing of factions. He's just as much at fault in this as my sister is. He admitted. He turned to look up at Gretchen who hid behind an older man, blocking him from getting a good look at her. His wolf let out a growl, but he knew that he had a long way to go before she would ever trust him. Persephone and Tristan are behind this as well. The coven they belong to believes in that same logic, Vita explained. You think they're working together in this? Benjamin. Turned to ask Coulson. Not likely, I know my pack has a problem with Amanda being a hybrid. But I never thought they would work with a coven to get rid of her, Coulson admitted. There were growls all through the pack as they heard what Coulson had said. They were ready to fight for their future Luna and bring her home. Well, if they're working together we need to be ready for both. Vita, what do you have available for us to use? Madeline asked. Zachary turned to his mother to object, but she lifted her hand to stop him. Son, I would rather die fighting than wither away as an old lady. Zachary sighed but nodded. They all turned to look at Vita. Vita smirked as she rubbed her hands together and said, Step into my office. Chapter 68 Ophelia asked for the room to be cleared. Her guards picked up Tabitha and Marco and moved them out of the room. All who were left were Ophelia, Tristan, Hudson, and Amanda. Hudson still refused to look up and take a look at Amanda. He knew his heart would break even more than it already had if he saw her going to pieces over what he had done. If only he could talk to her and explain his reasoning. Artemis continued to whine in his head, but he forced his wolf down. He needed to stay his wolf down. He needed to stay in control and keep a clear head. 
He knew the pack would be coming soon, he just needed to be patient to execute his plan. He needed Amanda to hang on just a little bit longer. Well now that it's just the four of us, we can get on with the festivities, Ophelia exclaimed. She walked over to Hudson and placed her hands on his shoulders. I know you've been through a lot, Hudson. Just know that I'm here for you and we can forget that all this ever happened and move on. Just as soon as I kill Lil Mandy over there, you'll never have to worry again. She moved around him and now was facing him, blocking his view of Amanda. Hudson raised his head slowly, narrowing his eyes at Ophelia as he spoke with a certain amount of disdain in his voice. Ophelia, I will never love you. After today, I swear that I will hunt you down and torture you until you are pleading for mercy and begging me to kill you. I will keep you locked up for years making you go insane and never giving you the satisfaction that you won today. If I were you, I would run. Run as far as you can as fast as you can. Cause when I find you, you will then understand what pain and torture feel like." Ophelia stood there staring at Hudson with her eyes wide and her lips slowly quivering. He smirked as he smelled her fear. Ophelia was starting to panic, and she began thinking quickly about how to fix this. And then a thought came to her. Tristan, I need a love potion. Tristan had just been sitting back and enjoying the show. He wasn't going to allow Ophelia to kill Amanda until he drained her of her magic just like the Leakin King had wanted to do before. He saw the potential of raw power that he could obtain from her. It would be stupid to let all that power go to waste. And Ophelia asking for another favor might give him the perfect opportunity to let him get it. Sure, I can make something for you. But it's going to cost you, he told her. I don't care what the cost is, I want Hudson to love me and only me. If he won't do it on his own, then I need you to make it happen with magic. Fine, give me Amanda and I'll make you the potion. Ophelia looked at him with crazed eyes. What? No, she's not for sale. I'm going to kill her and then the world will be rid of her and I'll never have to worry about her ever again. Tristan stood up from the wall that he was leaning on. Then there's no deal. You shouldn't be concerned about the hybrid if you have him. Isn't that what you really wanted? Ophelia bit down on her lower lip. She looked from Hudson to Amanda, to back to Hudson. Fine, you have a deal. Tristan smiled and said, Come with me and I'll have it ready for you shortly. Ophelia jumped up and down in her spot. She leaned over and lifted Hudson's face with a claw. I'll be back soon. Once you have taken the potion, I'll let you make it up to me for the horrible things you just said to me. Tristan rolled his eyes as he walked out of the room with Ophelia walking happily behind him. The guard closed the door, leaving Hudson and Amanda alone. Persephone paced the main room of the dungeon they had been keeping Amanda in. She was almost impressed with the girl. Amanda had endured a hell of a lot of pain from both her and Tristan. They tried everything they could to find out what she knew about her power. But she refused to give them anything. When Tristan had told her the kind of power that she was able to handle, Persephone knew they needed to obtain it. This was why the Leaking King wanted her so much. She understood now that whoever wielded the power this girl had could gain control of all the factions. It would put the witches in a higher place on the faction scale instead of always being used, threatened, and undermined for their power. The girl was strong, she could tell that she had endured a lot growing up. Persephone bet that her wolf was pretty powerful too. Persephone had even offered the girl to make her life easier and take the burden of the magic away from her so she could live as a shifter wolf and never have to worry about spells ever again. But she refused. Persephone was running out of options. She didn't want to have to kill the girl. She didn't want blood on her hands, especially the blood of a witch from a once powerful coven. It would only be a matter of time before they came after her. Samuel walked into the room, pulling Persephone out of her current thoughts and forcing herself not to think about him and what could have been. Where are we with the Alpha and Hybrid? he asked. He rejected her, to get the bracelet off. Your daughter should be happy now, 
Persephone answered. Samuel sucked in a breath. He had known from experience how hard it was to be with another wolf and not your mate. That boy was not going to be happy for a long time. Before he could say anything, Samuel was getting a mind link from one of his warriors at the southern border. Warrior, Alpha? Alpha, what is it? Warrior, Alpha Benjamin is here asking to speak with you. He says it is regarding his son, future daughter-in-law, and two other pack members that you are holding hostage. Samuel sighed. Alpha, I'll be there shortly. Warrior, you might want to hurry. He looked at Persephone and said, it looks like we have some company before he turned and headed toward the southern border. Hudson continued to try to get Amanda to look up at him. Now that they were alone, he needed to explain himself. Amanda refused to listen. Hudson closed his eyes as he tapped into the strength of his wolf and broke the bindings on his wrist. He quickly ran up to Amanda, grabbed her face, and said, Amanda, I love you. The rejection wasn't real. And kissed her. Chapter 69 Amanda's heart fluttered as she felt Hudson's lips upon hers. Her head was screaming something else, that this was wrong. Her tears burned as they ran down her cheeks. No, she yelled as she pulled back from him. She was tired of crying over him. He had hurt her one too many times and didn't want him to see her cry. She wiped her face on the side of each of her arms and refused to look at him. Hudson put his hands up in surrender showing that he meant her no harm. Amanda, just hear me out. Please, he pleaded. Amanda was stuck, it was not like she had any place that she could go. She was still bounded by the manacles. Amanda continued to look away from Hudson. She didn't want to give him a chance to weaken her with those blue eyes. Amanda internally groaned. Hudson took a deep breath before he started. Ophelia kept repeating to just say I reject Amanda Stevens. What she didn't know was that you were adopted and your true birth name is Jenkins. She spelled the bracelet with the wrong name. I had an opportunity to get rid of the bracelet without having to reject you, I knew that you would think that I rejected you because you still don't know all the rules to be a wolf. I had to take the risk, even if it meant you never forgive me for making you feel rejected for a moment. Amanda, you have to believe me. I would rather die than ever reject you. Amanda still didn't look at him. Her heart was confused, a part of. Her wanted to believe that he was telling her the truth, but her head didn't want to consider anything he was saying was true. Her head was trying to protect her heart and not allow Hudson to hurt her any more than he already had. He's telling you the truth, Willow confirmed. He didn't reject us. The tears continued to race down her cheeks. Hudson brought up his fingers and started to wipe the tears away, gently touching her cheek. His fingers warmed her skin with his touch. Hudson reached up and yanked the manacles off the wall allowing her arms to drop down to her side, never once letting his eyes look anywhere else but into hers. I love you, Amanda Jenkins. I want to spend the rest of my life with you, and only you. Will you do me the honor of being my true mate for life? Hudson asked as he got down on one knee in front of her. Amanda looked down at Hudson. The flutters were racing up and down her body and her heart were beating frantically. Willow was screaming yes in her head. It was time for her to choose whether she was going to complete the bond and mate for life with Hudson, or say the rejection herself and release them from all of this torture and constant battle they always seemed to be in. Amanda gulped. She straightened her shoulders and lifted her chin, never letting her eyes shift from staring into Hudson's. I, Amanda Jenkins. She paused as she watched Hudson's face. His. Eyes filled with concern but he stayed silent. Amanda smirked. Yes, Hudson. I choose you, to be my mate for life. Hudson let out a breath he didn't realize he'd been holding. He stood up and picked Amanda up into his arms and kissed her, deeply and passionately. Amanda wrapped her arms around his neck and returned his kiss with just as much passion and love. 
Hudson slowly pulled back and leaned his forehead against hers. He opened his eyes and stared into hers. May I? he asked. A sly smile slowly came across her lips as she lifted her eyebrow and nodded her head. Hudson smiled devilishly and Amanda's heart raced as Hudson tilted her neck and slowly kissed down it until he was in the crook of her neck. He tightened his hold on her as he tilted his head back and his fangs started to grow. Amanda tried to control her breathing while waiting for his teeth to tear into her skin. The pain was quick and it was then replaced with a tingling sensation that rushed throughout her entire body. Amanda started to shake as if something inside her had been awakened. A sensation of her magic flowed with her as she and her wolf connected on another level. The manacles that were still bound to her wrist shook violently and then broke away. Hudson pulled back as he watched Amanda shake within his hold. Amanda, Amanda. What's wrong? Are you okay? he asked as he continued to hold her, not knowing what else to do. Amanda's eyes flew open and felt she was seeing things in a new light. She lifted her head and looked at Hudson, her love, her mate, and smiled. Never felt better, she told him. Hudson immediately felt the change in his mate. Are you and? Willow. Amanda nodded with excitement. Yes, I can feel her all through me. It's exhilarating. Amanda lifted her nose to the air as her eyes turned violet. She had some unfinished business with a certain she slash wolf. Amanda started to make her way to the door. Wait, we need to make a plan, Hudson told her. Amanda could hear voices in her head, the members of the pack. Pack's here, she told him. Hudson smiled, it was true. Amanda had finally connected with her. Wolf. His brows furrowed for a moment. Wait, how could she hear? Amanda looked at him and pointed to her head. That's the witch in. Me. Now come on, let's go find Tabitha and Marco. Hudson pulled her behind him as he yanked on the door, pulled it off its hinges, and slammed the guard with the door. Hudson stepped over the guard, then turned back to Amanda and extended his hand for her to take. She smiled as she took his hand and walked over to the mess he had just made. Tabitha was still pissed at her friend and Alpha. She couldn't believe that he would take the easy way out and reject Amanda. It just didn't make sense to her. There were sounds of fighting coming from down the hall as Marco and Tabitha both looked up and wondered what was happening. Guards rushed into the hall only to be flung back. Hudson walked through first, followed by Amanda. Tabitha jumped up with excitement and surprise. Amanda rushed over and melted the binds that were holding Tabitha. And Marco Tabitha pulled Amanda into a hug. I thought the rejection was real, she whispered. I did too until I was reminded that I was born a Jenkins, Amanda said with a smile. Tabitha's eyes widened when she realized the loophole and then noticed a new mark on Amanda's neck. Tabitha sucked in a breath as she pointed to Amanda's neck. Did you, are you? Tabitha sucked in a breath as she pointed to Amanda's neck. Did. You, are you? Marco walked up behind his mate. Maybe this discussion should be. Saved until a later time, he suggested as they followed Hudson through the exit. Chapter 70 Samuel's eyes widened as he took in the members from the Stonecrest pack. He hadn't anticipated Alpha Benjamin risking the lives of almost his entire pack for the life of one girl. Samuel sucked in a breath and pasted a smile on his face. Benjamin, it's been a long time, he said to the Alpha standing in front of him. Benjamin nodded. Samuel, I wished it was under different circumstances. My warriors said you think I took your son and his girlfriend? I'm sorry to tell you that they're not here. Benjamin lifted his arm and motioned for someone to come forward. After a minute, Samuel's eyes narrowed as he saw his son emerge from the crowd. He stared at his son in disbelief. How could he betray him and the pack this way? Samuel asked his son, Why would you tell them something like that, son? It's wrong to lie to people. 
Coulson puffed out his chest and lifted his head high as he stood up against his father, like you've been lying to the pack. How you're secretly working with the witches to get rid of a hybrid. For what? What has she ever done to your father? Coulson boldly asked his father. Samuel was taken aback by how his son was addressing him. You know the rules of the pack, son. We mate with our own. We don't mix breeds. The rules have been set upon this pack for hundreds of years. I'm not one to be changing those rules. There was a mist that was slowing moving between the feet of the pack and was starting to rise. Vita looked down and panicked. Everyone shift and run, she yelled as she pulled Gretchen behind her and started chanting pushing the mist away from them both. Vita looked over at Madeline and Zachary who started to chant forcing the mist back to where it came from. Vita looked at Deke who was still in his human form. Deke, you have to shift, she ordered. Deke shook his head, he started to cough from the mist. Deke was conflicted. He wanted to protect Vita but knew the best way to protect her was in his leaken form. Deke grunted as he pulled his shirt off and started to shift. He howled when he was in his full leaken form. Wolves from the other pack started to move back not wanting to engage with a leaken wolf. Samuel pulled on his son's arm. You come with me, he demanded. Coulson pulled his arm back from his dad. I can't live by those archaic rules, it needs to change. Samuel growled at his son, you listen to me, boy. You either come with me now or don't ever come back. You'll be an outcast and no longer a son to me. Coulson searched his father's eyes to see if he was bluffing. When? He could see that his father was letting up on his ultimatum, he turned and looked behind him and looked at Gretchen. He hated that his father was forcing him to make a big decision so quickly. He turned and stared at his father and without breaking eye contact he took a step away from his father and the pack. Samuel's heart clenched as he watched his son step away from him. There was a small part of him that was proud that he was willing to separate himself and do what was best for him. Something he was never able to do. Samuel looked at his son for the last time before he turned, shifted into his wolf, and ran back to his pack. Coulson let out a breath as he continued to walk backward pushing himself farther and farther away from his pack. He started to cough as the mist started slowly filling his lungs. What was happening? Shift, you need to get out of here. Gretchen yelled at him. He shook his head no, he wasn't running. He was going to stay and protect her. Coulson continued to cough as the mist got thicker and thicker. He was having a hard time breathing. He dropped to his knees, it was weakening him. No, he heard someone scream. He was hunched over as he tried to get some air. His wolf started to howl as the mist continued to weaken him. A shiver went through him, which made him look up to see Gretchen running toward him. She sucked in a breath as she leaped over a bush and landed by Coulson. She pulled him into her arms and spelled a force shield around them. Coulson sucked in a breath and winced as the air seemed to burn his dry lungs. Coulson looked up at Gretchen. You, you saved me. Gretchen shivered, and her stomach started to flutter. She didn't understand what was going on with her body. She was still afraid of him, but she couldn't let him die. It was the right thing to do, she told him. Coulson nodded. Thank you. Gretchen stared into Coulson's chocolate eyes. She didn't want to fall for him but there was just something that kept her from running away from him. Gretchen looked away as she pushed away any romantic thoughts or feelings for the alpha wolf that was sitting next to her. Coulson chuckled. Gretchen noticed the mist moving back off her shield and released it when she knew it was safe. Are you two okay? Vita asked as she walked up to them. They both nodded. Gretchen got up quickly and tried to put some distance between her and Coulson. The longer she stayed close to him, the more she thought about him and wanted to feel his touch. Gretchen coughed as she tried to clear the thoughts that were playing with her head. This wasn't the time to be thinking about all this. 
Madeline walked up behind them. I think it's time we met the puppeteer that is orchestrating all this. Madeline started to whisper a spell as she lifted her cane and forced it back down into the earth. The ground started to shake and rumble. Clouds started to move quickly through the sky, there was a static current in the air as a bolt of lightning pierced the sky causing Gretchen to jump. She looked over at her grandmother and was impressed. Thunder boomed across the sky and it started to rain, drenching the mist and causing it to disappear. In the distance, they saw a small group of people standing together as a collective. Looks like we're up. Ready to show them what we got? Madeline asked. Zachary chuckled as he shook his head. Both Vita and Gretchen looked at each other before nodding in agreement. Colson took off his shirt before shifting into his wolf. Gretchen sucked in a breath when she saw Colson without his shirt and watched in amazement, while he shifted into his wolf. Vita nudged her and laughed as they followed Madeline to the gunfight they were about to get into. Colson followed closely behind, making sure that no one jumped them from behind.